Hey guys, um, so I'm going to attempt to show you how I did this piece. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my square wire. Um, and this is more than I need, this is like eight and a half, eight and a half inches, this is more than I need. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and shape it around. Give it some shape. Um, I don't want it to be quite a bit larger, so I'm just going to manipulate this a little bit. I also want space around the cabochon. That might be a bit much. Mm, that should be all right. But you, you do, you want some space on these sides. Um, this one's going to tilt, so it doesn't matter that much, but you want that little bit of space right there for the half round to wrap around that and it still sit nice and snug. Um, go there. That should be about good. Hold it tight. Bend these. So this is just the frame. Adjust it, make sure it's still the shape I want it. So I got my half round, 21 gauge. Give it one loop around. Sorry. One loop around and I'm going to slide it down. And I'm just going to quickly wrap up this bale. So that may be a little too long. I don't know yet, but I would rather, I'd rather have too much than too little when I get down there. Give it one more twist around. I'm spread that out a little, like a V, so that when I go to wrap this and secure it at the other side, I have a little space right there. Um, like I said, that's much more wire than I needed. I'm going to go ahead and cut some excess off. It'll make this part a little easier. I'm going to bend it right through. A 
like so. And then just attach it. I'm going to try and leave a little space here and here between where a little bit of space here because I may end up attaching a wire in there so I don't have to attach it too far below. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Get that one a snip. So just one loop around. Try not to push on the frame much when you're doing this, really just turning that wire. Give it a little space so it comes back upwards. And there you go. This is going to be the front, so from the back, both those wires are facing that way, so they don't catch on anything. Um, and that's almost a finished frame. I'm going to grab just a bit of that 21 gauge, I believe. Just a little strip. And see where I want my stone to sit in there. So I should go ahead and put one right about there. And I'll do a couple wraps. I'm gonna want this to be pretty secure. I'm gonna wait to clip that till I get the other side. That should be good right there. Now I wanna make sure it's real tight. This is what's holding the cab forward. Really sorry about the focusing. It is a camera on a phone. It is a phone. All right, so need to tighten this side up a little bit. Just give it a little rock, rock, rock. There we go. So two wraps and then that third one I'm just going to clip on the front side. Press it down. And that's the top spar. I will put one more. I usually put two.
So there you go, there's two supports to back it. With half round also because it gives it a nice little flat surface to sit on. So that's that, that's pretty much the frame. Frame is done. Now we can add some pieces to it. So let me get that ready and I will be back. Okay, so I am just uh, making the coil now. Um, this is the first step in my coil. So here we go. Make sure I'm going the right way. Oh. Here we go. I think that's pretty much what I need for now. Okay, um, so some of you may have already seen the other video I did on making coils. So this may be like boring to you, this part. But I just thought I would include it a little bit at least. Um... So I'm just attaching the wire I just made to a 20 gauge. This was 28 gauge on 24. Um, and I'm attaching this to a 20 gauge. And I am using a drill for this. But yeah, if you're curious, more curious about the coil part, you can look for my other video. Um, so let's see if I can do this tracking focus again. Got my wire wrapped the same way I wrapped coming over the top towards me. On the first one, so I'm doing the same direction with this. And try and make sure your core wire is straight. I didn't do that first. double check oh, it's springy it wants to go I did get a piece of 24 gauge come on camera and I just wrapped it around the frame from where I want it to go God, I'm so sorry guys from where I want it to go and wrapped it around the frame kind of as a template um, to see how long I need it Let's see. I'm about halfway there.
Um, so what I did was off camera, I just added another line of 28 gauge, uh, wrapped it here. I straightened, I cleaned this edge up. This was the edge over here that I finished on. It's super pretty. Um, this side, not as much, but it doesn't matter too much. You just want that little excess to connect to the frame. Um, this is where I had it L shaped and then stuck in the drill, uh, straightened it out cleaned up this edge, pulled this wire back, uh, gave it a couple wraps with the exposed um, 24 gauge underneath. And then I came back, added another 28 gauge here, tied it off on this side, and then spun it all the way down. So now we got one nice 28 gauge kind of filling that gap. And you don't have to do that. I didn't actually do that on the first coils I made, but um, yeah, I rather like how it looks. So, the stone is going to go some like that. So basically, this bottom part of the figure eight is going to just barely cup over that hopefully um if not at least side by side so i just need to make sure that i end i tie off right here above or around that line it can be at it that's fine as long as it's right around there so that i can have that bottom part I'll show you on this one the bottom part of the figure eight cover where it's attached at now i want a little bit of space because i'm also oh i forgot about that didn't i i'll probably make that one off camera too um i have another section of that first part of the coil going around it so that's going to tie off under there too right up under there so Just check. Yep, I should be good. I should have just enough. So, try and attach it a little loose at first so I can slide it. And I'm going to go from the front up behind. You know, it's okay. I think I can attach it up here if I can't attach it here, but we'll see. I did do these um, hooks where the bale is clamped to the frame a little lower than I did on the last one. I think it was pretty much right up top, so I would have had plenty of space to go right next to it if I went a little higher with it. Okay, I'm about attached. I don't want to do more than one wrap. I want to try and get one wrap to be as secure as possible because I don't want to take up too much space on the frame. Okay. And I am going to wait to clip any excess till I shape this a little bit. Okay, see, that's what I was talking about, that square. Tightened it a little and bam, it was, it was on there. Okay, let me set my stone and double check that that'll be all right. And I think that should be the bare minimum of where I need it. So I'm just going to take it and just follow the frame. I want it to be on top of it, but not too far on top of it. I'd rather it be more towards the inside edge. 
because I want some overhang there. I want to try and hide the frame as much as possible. Okay, right about here I'm going to come back. And I've done these where this loop is all the way on this side, it's in the middle, or it's on this side. The last one I did it where it kind of went on the opposite side and then twisted back over. Kind of like how that turned out, so I'll just do that again. Okay, so you can have, when you're measuring... I guess I didn't need quite so much. I might have added a little, but I could do without one, two, three, maybe three of these so that this coil stops right about, so you can see, right about there. And that'll give some more wire. Anything you attach to the bale, you really want it to be down here near the bottom though, because this is where your chain's going to be running through. And if you attach your wires up here, it's really going to conflict with the chain. Um, it's going to, I wouldn't say it quite catches, but it's not going to, it's not going to slide as smoothly. That's for sure. So. Yeah, I'm going to pause and see if I can get this attached without too much trouble. Okay, and I'm back. I felt bad for pausing because you probably want to see this, but I did. I just pulled this bit up a little. You can see there's a little gap now. Uh, pulled it up a little so I get a little higher on the bale. Um, I put a, a, quite a bit of wrap here too from the core wire onto the main core wire. So that took up a little space too, about, mm, uh, I don't even know, but, so I pulled it out, I stuck it in this way, because I'm on this side of the bale, so I'm going back through the other side, and let me see if I can get this attached. Same concept, I really only want as many wraps as I need to get it tight. No more than I need because I'm going to have another wire coming up here with it. Um, I might just have to attach it a little lower somewhere off the bale. But that's where that ended up. So that's that. Um... I, let me see if I can get this a little higher. No, I don't want to mess up the bale. So I'm going to go ahead and try and tighten this one all the rest of the way down. Now that I got it in place, snip off a little extra so that end doesn't come back towards the front too far. Give it a good squeeze, and it should be in place now. Um, set the stone back in. Just to see how that's going. I want it to cover that frame, though. So I'll push it back over the frame a little bit. And there we have it. Stay over that frame. And, yep, that should be good. When I come back with that figure eight, I'll just cover right over that spot right there. And it will cover the tip of the stone, but that's okay. Um, right here, I want to steer clear of being too much in the way of where that chain is going to be hitting but I can do some more adjustments on that in a little bit all right I am going to go and get the next piece ready that's going to wrap along with it okay 
And I just used my drill again just to get that going real quick. So basically I just made another one of these with 28 gauge. Only this time I put it on a 20 gauge instead of on 24 gauge like I did when I was making the coil. So that will hopefully give it a little more stability when it's just a standalone. Mm, that should work. Um, I did not have a whole lot of space in here. Uh, I don't have a lot of space to attach right here, especially another 20 gauge wire. If it was 24, I might, nah, probably not. So what it is, I just stuck this pick through there, wind it up a little bit, give me a little space. And now I'm going to try and attach through here and I may have made this a little long same thing as I said before it um, my thing is always I'd rather have a little too much than a little too little because that can be a problem all right so bend this over I'm actually going the opposite way that I attached the big coil. Um, but I'm also going to try and be coming just behind it. So let's see. Let's get this on there real good. This is going to be the tricky part because of where I attached it. If you have more space here. See, this still could come in handy, um, being lower for when I attach the other piece. Maybe, maybe not. I'm kind of experimenting at the same time as I'm showing you guys. I've done this rep maybe five or six times. <clears throat> so there's still room for me to learn, too. Um, clip that for now. I might need to clip more. Mm -hmm. Should be good. A nice squeeze. Okay, that's not the wire moving, that is my coil moving. So now I'm just going to follow and I'm going to be coming up on the back side. I want it, I kind of want it to show at the same time. Remember that figure eight's going to wrap right here around it. So I want to, I'm going to have to attach some wires here, some wires here. So I don't want to crowd the frame too much, but I do want to cup it. I'm just following the coil. Kind of play with it. That's what I want it to look like. We'll see if it ends up looking like that. Okay. I'm going to come up actually using that base bail to hook it. And ha, way, way more than I needed. But that's good. That's good. Um, let's see. Where am I going to attach... Um, you know what, I might just have to take up that other space, if I can, if I can get to it, and then attach where I've been attaching for the other one down here. Sorry, you actually do have plenty of space to attach, to attach this side of this attachment. So this, that wraps underneath, is actually going to be attached over here on this side and it's going to come across and that way so that's what i'm keeping in mind or have been trying to for this part so i need this weave to stop right about where am i going to go with it 
in there, so right about here. Nails are a great thing to have when you are wire wrapping, I will tell you that much. I'm not a nail biter, so I've always had pretty healthy nails. So all I did to adjust it is find where I needed it, got in there with my nails, pulled it apart a little, got my flush cutters right up against the core wire, and gave that coil part, that weaving wire, a snip. I'm going to pull off the excess. Um, try and compress this, give it a little clean up. So now, it should stop right around where I need it to. Um, this is much too much wire to be trying to wrap with or tie off with. Okay. I'm going to try not to misshape this, misshape this too much, but more importantly, got to get it in there. So how am I going to tie this off? Go in. Normally I would just go right around the bale, the base of the bale. And this time I'm going to go in. Yeah, let me try that. Give this a little bend here. See if I can maybe a little more of an arch. It's pretty much just a straight up hook. We'll see if that works. back there. Let's see if I can feed it around. I want to be careful with the core wire. The first part I added. I This one can get a little bit out of whack. It's easier to reshape. I don't want to mess up that first attachment. So, so I'm trying to be kind of careful there. Just kind of rocking it back and forth to get it to move. Move through there. Yep, it's... It's going slowly but surely. There you go. Try shoving it that way I'm gonna want it on that side of the core so I know I'm gonna want where this ended to be pretty much near the bottom that's working pretty good Kind of giving it a push at the same time as I'm pulling. Let's check and see. Okay, push this one back in place. It looks all right. Yeah, I don't want to go any any lower than that, so I checked it just in time. So I do not want to go. What I don't want to do is I don't want this to go below that bail line. Otherwise, I think it's good. So now just tighten it. 
Um, I may actually give it a little more back if I can. Right there. Hold the top. Now that I got it where I want it, give it a little twist. It's on there. So that part is attached. Um, this part did sink in a little more than I wanted, but that's all right. Still looks good. When you look at it from different angles, you'll see that that wire, but looking at it straight on, it might kind of disappear on the bottom and come back out. It actually looks pretty cool too. So that's where we're at so far. Um, and that's two, that's the frame, the bail, the supports in the back, and two attachments. All right. So next is going to be the figure eight, and I'm going to take a quick break. So this part is going to be done kind of half off, half on, mm, mostly off. So I'm going to give myself a little bit of space um, in an attempt to not waste wire. This one that's a little bit shorter is a scrap and it is almost five inches, about four and three quarters of an inch. So this one's about five inches that I added. Um, I'm gonna try and keep that one on the top. So if I do that, let me see. Yep, that'll be on the top. So the top wire is gonna stay on the top as I spin it around. Now I don't wanna use too much, but I do think I'll have enough to tie it off as well. So I can actually start down here. And I'm just going to give it a couple wraps to secure it. And I am going to do the same weave that I always do on that part. You can mix it up. You can do whatever two wire weave you want till you get to the point where it needs to split into a figure eight. This is going to make it a little easier for me. So I just put it in where I want it, press my wedge in, these little leather spots are going to hold it tight. I'm working off a of bobbin, I'm not going to go through the whole weave, but just to show you this one, this one. Okay, two wraps, you can do however many we want, like I said, it's up to you, let's see what I did is typically a two and four. So that's one, that's two, three, four. And then two around. I like to see a decent amount of the core wire on one side. I just like how that looks. Um, I mean, really, you can do whatever you want. You could do four wraps around two and then just a tiny little... So that you could do whatever you want. Like I said, any two-wire wrap. One, two, three, four. And go around two. One, two three, four. Keep pressing it tight. And that's what I'm going to do 
for a little bit. Um, I'm going to try and make sure I don't go past where it would probably meet at the bottom. Um, and then I'll attach it. But I'll be right back. I'm going to do some of these. Alright, so I have what? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I'm cutting that close. Um, I counted the repeats that I did on this one. Just tried to kind of go based off that. This, this whole wrap is a little bit bigger than the other one, though. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to slip this in between these two attachments and the frame and just to make it a little bit easier um, no I think I will so because I'm not sure how many if I went too far I'll slide it all the way up to where I started the weave and bend it there you can have this start anywhere that's going to be in the path. As long as it's going to be, let me bend this back. As long as it's going to be in that path of the figure eight, it doesn't really matter if it's going to be covered. But I might have put one too many wraps. I might not have. So just to be safe, I'm going to go right up to the frame with the start of the weave. And first, I'm going to do this inside one. I'm going to cut this one first. I'm going to cut it pretty short because it's really just going to cup around like a hook. So it's not going anywhere. It's not really attached really tight. That's what I'm going to do with this one. I'm going to give it a little curve and send it up under that. I'll be careful not to push on these two too much. They should be fairly tight, but when you're messing with attachments, putting a lot of pressure, it can light, loosen that up quite a bit. Okay, so that's two wraps around. Give it a clip. All over. Give it a good squeeze onto that square wire. And now it should be pretty good. Um, okay, so now I am just going to do what I did with the other wire on the outside, but on the inside. I'm going to follow. Okay, yeah, I had enough space. I definitely had enough space. <laughs> um, I'm going to try and go straight to that point where it's going to wrap over, so I'm going to go straight over there and then start to bend it. Okay, and right now I know I can add a few more. So this is what I meant by working half on, half off. There's two, one, two, three, four, tighten, one, two, one, two, three, four, tighten, one, two, one, two, three, Let's check. I'm going to go a little more. Get my stone. I'm 
Okay, so I only want to go up to here. That's as far as I want to go with this weave. So I may do maybe one or two more, and we'll see where that gets me. Definitely one more. Two. Two. Three. Four. Actually, gonna want to end on a two wrap. I'll just do that first wrap on that wire to hold it. And let's see. I don't want it to turn in too much on me. I think that might be good. All right, so now I can split off into the figure eight. Kind of giving my figure eight its shape. And like I said, I want it to, I want it to look natural. So I'm using 20 gauge for my cores here because I want it to work with me, not against me. And give it that natural shape. Because you only want to have to do this once really and then if it gets out of whack a little fix it but you want to get your basic shape down before you even start so let me see stones all the way down all the way down and it covers yep and like I said I really want to at least try and cover this first wrap, where this wrap ends. So. Change the shape up a little bit. That should be perfect, hopefully it stays like that. So. Now, pull this up off of that attached wire. And now I'm just gonna figure eight. So I actually already have that first wrap. I'm just going to go right over, across, and I'm just going to go one wrap around, cross back over. So I'm going from the top, under, and up, and then I'm giving it one more wrap. Now I'm back there. Go under the other wire. In the beginning, especially, you want to keep pushing that wire tight. So there's that one wrap. I'm going to go under, give it one wrap, under, and you can do a different variation of the figure eight, making it look a little different. Thicker or thinner, it's just going to give you more space between. I want to have pretty full coverage because I don't want to see any of this stuff. So that's why I'm just doing one wrap and then the crossover. One wrap and the crossover. I guess I'd call it a cross under because I'm coming from the top of one wire on the top. I'm going under the other one. I'm going to do a couple more of these. Remembering to try and keep it tight. Nails are your best friend. Okay, and I'm going to check after having done just, oh, I don't know how many. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight. I'd say ten ish. Um, put it back, make sure the stone's where it's supposed to be, make sure my shape hasn't moved much, if at all. I don't really want it to move at all. I want to make sure this is 
this flat looking. Yep, we're still looking good. All right, those wires haven't really moved. That natural curve. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep going and keep checking, and I'll be back when I'm ready to bend and attach. Okay. And I think I have as much as I need. Um, now you can see I'm going to go a bit past my line because I want that whole deal to wrap around it. Not just on the sides. I want that middle section to kind of cover some of this. Um, so if you're used to figure eights, this should be pretty easy. I'll run my finger down this line a little, try and straighten out the V on the figure eight. Kind of give it a little crease. It helps a little. Um, it's rather, it's, it's not, it's not too hard, but it's not the easiest thing to do a figure eight on a piece. Um, at least as it gets this wide, the wider it gets, the more difficult it is. Um, so I think this one I actually wrapped up pretty high. So now I'm thinking a lot of times when I do this wrap, cause I, like I said, I've done it maybe six times. I actually like how it looks on this one like that. So I think I'm going to try and replicate that. But a lot of times I will just pull both of these ends tight and just have it wrap. But this actually, I like how that turned out. Whoops. So I will try and do that again. So I'm going to get to where I don't need it anymore. Um, I stopped on that one. I'd rather stop on this one on the bottom because if I'm going to do that one, I am going to actually wrap a little half round around it. So give it a few wraps around one wire. Clean that up. All right. So, and go this way. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to start by pulling this side pretty tight. Not like crazy tight. When I say tight, I don't mean like, oh, it's super tight, but I think I went up a little higher than I did last time. So now I'm taking the second one. I'm just kind of bending more from down here to kind of keep giving it some shape up, up, up like that. And that, that half round isn't incredibly noticeable from the front, but as you even start to go to the side, you're going to see that half round right there. It's also going to help push and keep this end of this weave tight. Okay. So, looking for tie-offs. I'm not, I, I don't always tie off in the same exact spot. So, um, one thing that's indicative of doing a figure eight weave when you go to the back side of it it's it's best to have your ends shoot apart from each other because it keeps the end of this weave tight. If you start to bow in, it's going to give you a bunch of slack on this line. So I'm going to try and go out, and I'm probably going to attach somewhere along this side of the frame here. And as long as it can keep its shape, I'm going to attach this one over on the other side, but what I'm looking at right now is 
is that's pretty much sitting how it's going to sit. I'm, I'm going to probably stitch a couple little spots here to clamp all these down. But that I don't think is going to hold that cab in place. So right now what I'm looking at is how I'm going to, because I did it lower on this one. So that's where this extra wire right here is. That is this bottom wire to this figure eight weave that I wrapped back around and it's holding that cab down so that it doesn't wiggle and then slide up. So now I have to figure out, I may have to do, you know, I may have to do something similar to that. By doing that, my figure eight is not spread apart. So this wanted to move a little. It should be fine now. Give it, press it a little bit. Okay, not too worried about this because like I said, I'm going to stitch in there and that'll hold this back in place. You see it's kind of moved, it's got a gap over here, but I'm going to put a little stitch in there and that'll hold it. But the important thing is that cab is solid now. That's the important part. So we're pretty much done with this. And the more you do this, the faster it'll be. Also, if you're not me and making video, it's also faster. <laughs> so, um, I'm just going to put a couple stitches in here. Alright, so I got some 28 gauge, same gauge as my weaving wire for over here. And I think... You're going to find where you need to put a stitch, if you need to put a stitch, which I've never not needed to put one at least. Um, and this last time I put it down here, because um, it was lifting over here. Right now when I press over here, it looks, it seems like that pretty much holds it right where it needs to be. So I'm going to put my stitch closer to over here. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and go start 
and get that weaving wire in through the whole wrap back to the frame and I use a lot of extra wire on this because it just makes it easier faster weaving wire is fairly cheap I save all my scraps anyways and I'll do something with it um, but maneuvering around all of these attachments can be a little difficult so I like to give myself plenty of wire to work with. So now I'll come back to the front. I figure I don't want to go all the way to the side, but definitely closer to this side. Um, i got to pick where I want this to go through. And I'm thinking right about there. Um, so, if you have something super sharp that you use. I think I did in, the, uh, in another video I showed this pick that I use and it's not as sharp as it used to be. So I have another tool here somewhere. This is what I'm using right now because it is incredibly sharp. And I'm going to go preferably right in the middle of those two sorry hand cramp so i'm going to pick one of these gaps to kind of, so it kind of just acts as one of the wraps around a single wire i'm going to try since i did four wraps to go right in the center it's always best to do your stitch in the center of one of these so Give it a little space. If you can see that now, there is a little hole. And I am just going to feed it right through there. cut a little lower so that I can tuck the end of that under tuck it under and that stitch is finished it's a little scrap wire in there let's tighten this frame because it loosened a little. There we go. Now that that attachment there is pretty tight. Honestly, I don't know if I need to put another one, but I don't. You see how it does move a little bit? Like, if I were doing it for me, I might not even. Because I know I'm going to be gentle with my jewelry. The things that I wear. This is one I did. It's uh for me and it's uh it's pretty solid, even though I know I'm pretty gentle with my jewelry. Um but since I don't know who's gonna be wearing this, I'm gonna try and get this a little more stationary. That's why I use the 20 gauge. Up here I'm not as worried about there's gonna be a chain there. It's this bottom part really. I want it 
tighter. Solid, that's solid, that's that's all solid. Alright. So that's done. Cab's not moving. It's solid. Um I might bend this back a little bit right here. It's still pretty solid. I might bend that back a little so that that frame is covered real well. I think I bent it out a little bit when I was doing that last attachment, so I'm just gonna press it back. a little bit better there's that and let me see if I have I should have chain in here I just slammed it. Right. Flows good. It's not catching. So yeah, and then I will do a patina on this. I will cover this especially since it's turquoise um with a brush on latex as you can see this one's a bit bigger so i hope that helped i don't have any specific measurements also because i rarely ever use the same exact size stone same shape stone um you you just do those steps and you kind of you kind of you know Go with the flow. Like you saw, I had this one was a little too long. It's better you have more than less because you can always try and trim it down. You do have a little more waste that way. You know, put that in, you know, charge accordingly for that. But a lot better than having to take the whole attachment off and redo the whole thing. So, in my opinion, at least. So if you do an oval or something where your frame is cupping it better, um, instead of having a teardrop where it's just shooting to the side, with an oval, it'll pretty much be like that. That on both sides, it'll prevent it from sliding up. Um, same with a circle. It won't be able to slide up because 
on the top, it's starting to narrow off. So it'll hold it in place better. You won't have to do like this. Instead, when you wrap this around, you'll be able to tie off right away and without trying to cup it through. Um, that'll make this part sit a little better without that gap there. I don't think it bothers me though, especially from the front, from the side, it's really, it's, it's fine. But it's just one less thing you have to do with a different shape. Um, so yeah, like I said, hope hope I can get this uploaded. Hope you guys like like it. Hope it helps. If you want to try it, 